Bratz, one of the most iconic and exciting albums of the year, one of the most critically acclaimed, one of the most popular albums of the year, one of the most memeable albums of the year, one of the most culturally impactful albums of the year, an album that has an entire summer attached to it. Yeah, it's been a pretty crazy year for Charlie XCX, and one of the best parts of all of this is how she's branded it all and how she's marketed it all. It's been super clever, super creative, and has been the exact way you should really do this in the modern social media era with a pop album. She's played the game perfectly and of course to top it all off, to cap off the year, we have a remix album attached to Brat. As if it already wasn't going so well, she then decided to throw out these remixes one by one, bit by bit. You got the Billie Eilish one, you got the Lord one, you got multiple other ones and it just continuously boosted the hype for this album and finally she just played into the entire thing and did a whole album for it it's, it's very clever it's it, 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 she said in an interview recently she's not even sure where she goes from brat because this feels like the peak of her powers and the pinnacle of what you can really do with pop music to be honest in terms of marketing and branding and that kind of thing, uh, yeah, I kind of see where she's coming from because this feels like such a clever way to do an album rollout. It's felt like an entire era. It's felt like the whole year has been dominated by this. Who knows where you go from here? So I want to give some brief thoughts on the album itself. I say brief, sometimes I say that and then the album review rolls on for like 10 minutes. But we've already heard these songs, they've just been reimagined and reshaped in a new form. And I kind of wanted to just run down some thoughts on the tracks here and how I generally feel about these remixes. Because I think first and foremost I want to point out that I love the idea of what she's done here. I think it's very clever. I think Charlie XCX out of all the artists in pop music is very much the one that can tackle a remix because sometimes remix, remixes really often can just be, nowadays, a feature just added on and it's just a verse. You know, remember that Billie Eilish bad guy remix with Justin Bieber and it was just a verse from Justin Bieber? Like that can be how things feel nowadays or it can go the other way and it'll just be like a DJ adding like a dance beat to a song and then it's a remix. Not to say I'm absolutely against remixes but I think in the modern pop era that's kind of dumbed down the idea of a remix but Charlie XCX knows exactly how to tackle this and she's reshaped and reimagined the songs in such a cool way that feels like it's worth talking about. Perhaps any other artist drops an album like this I'd maybe not care but she might have paved the way for more artists to think actually let's put a little bit more effort into our remixes now. So while the positives are all there and everything's there in plain sight to see in how she's done all this, the actual music itself I think is a little underwhelming. I think this is mostly a bit of a mixed bag. I think for every one really good remix on this album you're getting another one that's mediocre or sucks away some of the, the spark, some of the life, some of the excitement that the original song originally gave us. Best example for that for me is the Von Dutch remix where the actual original track is just so amped up. The production is just blistering, it's fiery, it's fierce. Charlie is absolutely smashing us with sass and just personality with her singing and the vocals. Everything about that track is just a smash hit to me. And the remix just kind of like takes away a little bit of that oomph and the beat isn't quite as forceful, the beat isn't quite as exciting. Addison Rae kind of does okay with a bit of a scream and her own singing. It just doesn't quite match what the original did. But then the more remixes we got, it was kind of becoming clearer and clearer that maybe making comparisons to the original track is playing a fool's game because they're clearly trying to do different things. But even for just the music itself, I, I would still say some of these tracks just kind of pale and feel a little weak. I still don't really like 360 with Young Lean and Robin. I think Robin sounds so out of place, who shouldn't sound out of place on this song, but again, stripping away a little bit of that pizzazz from the instrumental, the beat, just makes the song sound a little flatter to me. It just doesn't sound quite as fun. 
and then Robin comes in and says booby and it just sounds all a bit odd really. Uh, Young Lean kind of does his own thing on the chorus. I kind of appreciate what he's going for but it feels a little too casual to really carry the song into anything more than it could have really been. And then you've got Sympathy is a Knife which I think was probably one of the most highly anticipated ones for many people since Ariana Grande is on it and that's a massive remix feature to have. I mean Billie Eilish was already huge but having Ariana there too is is a massive massive pull and yeah don't really feel this one either. I think when the original track has such uh, a beautiful way Maybe not beautiful, that maybe sounds like a silly thing way to put it, but it has such an interesting perspective on insecurities and like feeling that you're not quite good enough, feeling like you're being silly, feeling like ah, am I making these comparisons? Should I be should I really be behaving like this? It kind of it's really clever in how it, it, it outlines that perspective from Charlie and outlines the feelings but also kind of questions herself at the same time like it's not just doing it for the sake of throwing out insecurities for the sake of it it's a really really clever song and the music itself is fantastic and then the ariana remix just feels a little shallow and a little hollow really with the fact that a lot of it just ends up being about the haters and oh now that i'm on top everybody wants to see me fall is it because i'm too pretty and this kind of thing and it just like flips the original track on its head way too much to the point where the lyrics are nowhere near as maybe relatable or as admirable or as uh, anything else really uh yeah just just doesn't work apple is essentially like sucking the sugar out of a literal apple and they're just leaving it to be whatever's left like seriously this song just does not feel anywhere near as magnetic or as catchy and again it's not meant to be the same but i don't really find much to latch on to here even if i was just listening to this as a song without thinking of the original i don't really know what i'd pull from it that i'd enjoy and i like the japanese house i i have that review on this channel of their last album i think she's a really really underrated artist it's cool to see a pop up here but there's just some things where you kind of look at an artist and think, okay, maybe this isn't really your scene. And I don't really know if it matches at all here. Brilliantly segueing into the next feature I want to mention as well here. Freaking Julian Casablancas. Like, there's no more out of place feature I could imagine in this world than him being on this album at all, but then picking Mean Girls. Where did they come up with this? I, maybe they were being ironic. Julian just wanted to be a bit silly and goofy and like, I don't know. I just think after the most recent Voids album, I'm really all <laughs> Julianed out. I do not want to hear his voice much more. I, I, I didn't think it worked here at all. And yeah, that most recent Voids album is so bad. Back to back with Tanache should have been a smash hit and yet it doesn't land. Not sure how or why, but something just doesn't quite work here. I don't think you get quite enough of Tanache's personality jumping through because she's a great singer, great, great, great artist that has such a versatile range of styles. And I just don't think this track captures any of the things she's really good at. Bon Iver on I Think About It All The Time, I just think sucks away some of the beauty of the original track as well. Like that track is so personal to Charlie, the female experience of thinking about how you kind of want to balance your career with having children and it's all just such a confusing thing and then being in a music industry makes it even harder for Charlie as well. I just don't really think any of that is captured on this track either. I don't know, I just think there's such a mix of quality here where some of the tracks don't really capture the essence but then other tracks heighten the original song and bring you something fun. The least familiar I was with any artist on this entire remix album was BB Tricks and yet that's ended up being one of the best tracks which is quite a fun surprise. I think the uh, Club Classics instrumentals turned into a bit more of like a Brazilian kind of dance tune here. It's not quite on that level but I think it adds a bit of flair, a bit of flavour to it which I think is really fun. Uh, when I mentioned Rewind as well with Blade who I think is 
probably not going to be a general casual listener's favourite because I don't think Blade is the type of artist to really translate well to average listeners. But I think anybody that's been following what he's done over the years will appreciate how he managed to weave his way into this song. It's super atmospheric. It really adds a bit of that Drain Gang essence. And it's so cool to see Charlie even attempt a feature like this because it just doesn't seem to be one that you'd ever think would work. And of course, how can I not mention Girl So Confusing, which is just so hard to beat. I think it was always going to be the best remix, if we were being honest. It just completely nailed the assignment, really. It had an original track, you know, touching on a topic that made, made sense to Charlie. Then they kind of work it out on the remix. They touch on some of the things that were discussed, the confusion, the, the lack of understanding of where they're at, the way that the industry has kind of forced them to be together in a weird way, make comparisons, and how the industry treats women generally, and the lack of empathy and the sympathy for women in the industry. And that they, they, just, they just managed to nail all of those things on this one song. And it's one of those songs where you hear it and think, how the hell has this never been done on a mainstream level before? How is it that it's took this long for two prominent women in the industry to talk on something that I think a lot of women in the industry would fully understand and really relate to. It's just fireworks and yeah, I think it has a purpose that the other remixes don't quite have. It was just never going to be topped. I do think So I is pretty cool. The Everything is Romantic track with Caroline just adds her typical wailing that you'd expect from her. <laughs> over this track of course she always sounds beautiful the track itself sounds quite heavenly spring breakers is a lot of fun with kesha too guess with the dare on the production who i wasn't really a fan of his album but actually the production on this track sounds fantastic um still not entirely keen on billy's lyrics on that verse i i i know it's playful but it sounds a little sleazy but of course the dare coming in with his sleaze is going to add that to the song, I suppose. Yeah, I think for every good song, you get a pretty weak song. I've said this already. I think it's mostly a mixed bag. I sound probably more damn beaten than I should over an album like this, but I just saw the features and just expected brilliance, to be honest with you. I just thought this was going to be fantastic. It may be as good as the original because of the names, just the names alone that were popping up on these tracks I thought was super exciting. The, the range, the versatility, the diversity of artists popping in just got me excited. And I don't know if it's quite captured the brilliance of the original, but yeah, it's cool. I like it for what it is. Just overall, the actual music itself is mostly mixed. I'm not gonna give it a score. I'm just gonna leave it there. I've pretty much made my thoughts clear here anyway. But let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm being too harsh? Do you think ultimately there's some truth to some of the things I'm saying? I just think, you know, a year down the line, some of these remixes will stand up and still be, you know, fan favorites. But I, I think the, ma the vast majority of Charlie's fans will be listening to the originals over these easily. I don't even think it'll become close. I think it'll be a cool little thing that we will remember, but the actual music itself, I don't know if it's gonna stand the test of time really in the same way that Brat will. Let me know though, am I being too harsh? Thank you for watching as always. Make sure you subscribe as well if you haven't already. Do have a good day and goodbye.